When we want to convert from a transfer function to state variable representation, we have to define the states, since they are not part of the transfer function. We have previously looked at three choices for the states that led to three standard or canonical representations. These were the control, observer and modal canonical forms. So far, we have only stated the results and worked through examples. In this video, we develop the three canonical representations. We start with the development of the control canonical form or first companion form. The process we follow is to rewrite the transfer function so that we can draw a block diagram. We choose appropriate signals in the block diagram as the states and then we write down the state variable equations. We will do the development only for the second order case. How to extend the second order case to higher dimensional systems should be clear. For the control canonical form, we start with a general second order transfer function. We split the transfer function into two transfer functions, the denominator and the numerator, and we label the middle signal as z. We now focus only on the first half, the transfer function from u to z. We multiply across, which results in this equation. We now apply the inverse Laplace transform and rearrange things so that only z double dot is on the left hand side. We now draw the corresponding block diagram. We have a second order system, so we draw two integrators, which we connect together. We label the output of the right integrator as z, which means the input is z dot and the input of the left integrator is z double dot. We then implement this equation. z double dot is minus alpha 1 times z dot minus alpha 2 times z plus u. We now move on to the second part of the transfer function. The output y can be written as the numerator times z. And after applying the inverse Laplace transform, we get this equation. We can now add this equation to the block diagram to produce this block diagram. It is easy to see that y is equal to beta 0 times z double dot plus beta 1 times z dot plus beta 2 times z. This block diagram is now a valid representation of the transfer function. Next, we take the block diagram and label the output of the integrators as the states. x1 is the output of the right integrator and x2 is the output of the left integrator. The integrator inputs are x1 dot and x2 dot. We can now write down the state equation. x1 dot is equal to x2 which gives us the first line. x2 dot is equal to minus alpha 1 times x2 minus alpha 2 times x1 plus u which gives us the second line. For the output equation we have to do a bit more work. From the block diagram y is equal to beta 2 times x1 plus beta 1 times x2 plus beta 0 times x2 dot which we write down over here. However, the output should only be written in terms of the states and the input and we have to get rid of x2 dot. To do this, we use the second line of the state equation which we substitute in here. We rearrange things and write down the output equation in the required matrix form. The state equation and output equation are now in the control canonical form. Next we develop the observer canonical form or second companion form for the general second order case. We again follow the process of rewriting the transfer function, drawing a block diagram, choosing the states on the block diagram and writing down the state variable equations. We start by taking the transfer function and multiplying across which results in this equation. We now move all the terms to the left hand side and gather the terms with the common factors s squared, s 
and 1. Next, we divide by s squared, which results in this line. We now move all the terms except y to the right-hand side, gather all the terms with the common factor 1 over s, and within this, we again gather all the terms with the common factor 1 over s. We label this part as the signal z1 and this part as the signal z2. We build the block diagram up from the outer part to the inner part. We can see that y is equal to beta 0 times u plus the integral of signal z2. For the block diagram, y is equal to beta 0 times u plus the integral of the signal z2. We now add the inner part. This is the transfer function we want to implement and we have already built this part of the block diagram. We can see that z2 is beta 1 times u minus alpha 1 times y plus the integral of signal z1. We simply build this part of the block diagram now. Lastly, we see that signal z1 is beta 2 times u minus alpha 2 times y which we build over here. This block diagram is now a valid representation of the transfer function. We next take the block diagram and label the outputs of the integrators as the states x1 and x2 and the integrator inputs are therefore x1 dot and x2 dot. For the state equation we write down from the block diagram that x1 dot is equal to minus alpha 2 times y plus beta 2 times u and x2 dot is equal to minus alpha 1 times y plus beta 1 times u plus x1. However, we need to get rid of y, so from the block diagram we substitute y equal to x2 times beta 0 times u in here. We can now rearrange things to get the state equation in the required matrix form. The output equation we can directly write down from the block diagram as y equal to x2 plus beta 0 times u. The state equation and the output equation are now in the observer canonical form. Lastly, we develop the modal or Jordan canonical form for the general second order case. For now, we assume that the system has two distinct real poles, which means that the denominator of the transfer function has two different real roots. Using partial fraction expansion, we can then write the transfer function as the constant beta 0 plus two first order transfer functions, where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are the poles of the system, and R1 and R2 are the corresponding residuals. By multiplying with u of s, we get this equation. Let's draw the corresponding block diagram. The first term is easy to draw. It's beta 0 times u. The second term is a first order transfer function that we multiply with u. So in the block diagram, we have to feed the input u into a first order transfer function. We can realize 1 over s minus lambda 1 as an integrator with lambda 1 in a positive feedback loop. We then scale it with the gain r1. This part of the block diagram is now equivalent to this first order transfer function. We follow the same procedure to realize the third term in the block diagram. The block diagram is now a valid representation of the transfer function. Next, we label the outputs of the integrators as the states x1 and x2 and the corresponding inputs as x1 dot and x2 dot. It is now possible to write down the state equation and output equation directly from the block diagram. The state equation and output equation are here in the modal canonical form. 